as Ukraine pushes deeper into Russian territory, Russia has answered with large-scale attacks targeting key infrastructure across Ukraine. With both sides digging in their heels, there is now a dramatic shift in the war that has been dragging on since February 2022. In the beginning of August, Ukraine quietly launched a surprise incursion into Russia's Kursk region. Three weeks down the line, Ukraine says it now controls 100 Russian settlements and about 1,294 square kilometers of Russian territory. Ukraine also claims to have captured nearly 600 Russian soldiers. The goals of the surprise incursion range from boosting morale of Ukrainian troops, seeking a buffer zone, and stretching Russia's resources. Ukraine has been desperately trying to divert Russian forces away from cities like Pokrovsk and Kurokhovo. Ukrainian President Zelensky said the Kursk incursion is the first part of Kiev's victory plan, which he intends to present to U.S. President Joe Biden in September. The operation in the Kursk region is a part of the plan, and I will be talking with President Biden about it. The main point of this plan is to force Russia to end the war, and I really want it to end on fair terms for Ukraine. If the plan is accepted and delivered, which is also very important, if these two elements work together. Then we believe that our main aim will be reached. After initially appearing stunned by Ukraine's invasion, Russian President Vladimir Putin went scorched earth. Russia launched a wave of missile and drone attacks, which left multiple people dead in Ukraine and caused power cuts and water outages across the country. Russia's goal is to strike critical energy infrastructure facilities in Ukraine. It's a tactic that they have resorted to before. Moscow has a tendency to target this infrastructure for months, leading to blackouts, rationing, and a fear of power shortages over the coming winter. Russia is pressing ahead with its own offensive in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine. Russian forces are closing in on the strategically important city of Pokrovsk in Donetsk. Control of the city, which the Russian media call the Gateway to Donetsk, would allow Moscow to severely disrupt Ukrainian supply lines along the eastern front. And boost its campaign to capture the city of Chasivyar, which sits on higher ground, offering potential control of a wider area. Zelensky announced that he has ordered a further strengthening of defenses in the direction of Pokrovsk. But Ukraine has one more card up its sleeve: the newly arrived NATO F-16 fighter jets. When Moscow launched more than 200 missiles and drones at civilian energy and fuel facilities in Ukraine. Zelensky confirmed that the F-16s were deployed to help Ukraine down them. This step can potentially change Kiev's abilities in the battlefield by countering Russia's ability to bomb at will. But Kiev's momentum in the coming days and weeks may largely depend on the next U.S. move. In the past, the Biden administration limited how Kiev could use Western weapons. Or went slow on delivery of fighter jets, long-range artillery, tanks. With Russia on the back foot, will the White House deliver the final blow by removing any restrictions on how Ukraine uses U.S.-provided weapons?